Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here, and today we're going to be going over Unit 9 Notes for the Factoring Trinomials Review. So this is going to be a review of stuff that you did previously, in fact in Unit 4, but it's important that we kind of go over it so you remember it because it is easy to forget. So basically remember that when you are factoring expressions, you're undoing the multiplication and you're trying to write it in a factored form. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what our steps were when we were factoring. So when we were factoring when a is not equal to 1, that's what a lot of these are going to be. You're going to factor out the greatest common factor. Then you need to, to determine the value of a. And I'll talk more about this when we have specific examples um, because I'm going to try and find ways to make this easier on you guys. Um, so if your a is not 1, you're going to follow the following steps. You're going to set up the x. Solve the x. Remember, you need to figure out if this is your x, you're going to do a times c at the top, and that's going to be your product, and you're going to put b on the bottom, and that's your sum. So you need to figure out what values multiply to your product and add it to your sum. Then what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite the equation splitting up the b terms. Then you'll have four terms, and you can factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number one. So for number one, we have x squared plus 6x plus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my x. So I have 1 times 5. So I'm multiplying to 5 and adding to 6. So I need to think about things that multiply to 5. Well, the only things that multiply to 5 are 1 and 5. So as I notice here, whoa, or I just completely exit out. As you'll notice on that problem, um, what we did get was that there was a 1 on the front, okay? So you'll notice that there is a one right here. So whenever there's a one, these right here are your factors, which means that you can immediately write it out as x plus one times x plus five. You could still go through and do the factor by grouping like we talked about, and I'm just gonna show you quickly, and I'll explain this one more later. But as you'll see, if you go through and factor by grouping, you're going to still end up with x plus 5, x plus 1. Remember, if they're written in reverse, they still mean the same thing. So both of those are acceptable answers. So let's take a look at number 2. So for number 2, you're multiplying to 16 and adding to negative 10. So we have a positive product, which means both of our signs need to be the same. Well, since our sum is negative, both of our signs need to be negative. So we want to figure out what multiplies to 16 and adds to a negative 10. We have negative 1, negative 16, negative 2, negative 8. Well, I'm going to stop right there because that's going to add to uh, negative 10 and multiply to positive 16. Again, I notice that there's a 1 on the outside of that one, so that means I can immediately write it into my factors, which is x minus 8 times x minus 2. Next, let's take a look at number 3. So I'm ready to set up my x for number 3. So this time there's a number out in front, so I need to multiply that 3 times the negative 8. And that's going to give me a negative 24, and then I'm adding to the middle. So I'm going to have a positive product and a negative sum. So I need to figure out what multiplies to a negative 24 and adds to 5. Well, I have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Well, 3 and 8 are the ones that are going to give me 5. I need the 8 to be positive and the 3 to be negative in order for me to reach a positive 5. So for this version, because there is a number on the outside, I do need to use the method where I factor by grouping. So I need to keep the first term the same. That's going to stay as 3x squared. And then instead of writing 5x, I'm going to put 8x minus 3x minus 8. So now we're ready to factor by grouping. Between 3x squared and 8x, I can take out an x, and when I divide that out, I get 3x plus 8. Out of my next group, I can take out a negative 1, and then I get 3x plus 8. So I notice that my leftovers are matching, so I'm going to write one of those as a group. And then the other group comes from what is on the outside, which is x minus 1. So that right there is our final answer for number 3. Now taking a look at number 4, I notice that 3, 24, and 45 are all divisible by 3. So I'm actually going to start this off by taking out a greatest common factor. So when I do that, I'm left with x squared plus 8x plus 15. So now I am going to factor using the x, but I'm just going to focus on this part right here. 
So I'm going to be multiplying to 15 and adding to 8. By taking out that greatest common factor of 1, or of 3, sorry, I've now made my a value 1, which means I can use the shorter way of factoring. So multiplying to 15 and adding to 8, that is going to be 5 and 3. So I'm going to have 3 as on the outside, and then my two factors are going to be x plus 5, x plus 3. So because I took out a greatest common factor, I could use the easier way of factoring. That's why it is to your advantage to see if there's a greatest common factor that you can take out. Now, let's take a look at number 5. So I'm going to multiply my top times my bottom. So I'm multiplying to a positive 28 and adding to a negative 11. Well, since both my signs um, have to be the same, they're both going to be negative. So I'm going to have negative 1, negative 28, negative 2, negative 14, negative 4, negative 7. So that's what's going to add to negative 11 and multiply to positive 28. So I'm going to keep my first term the same, and then I'm going to split up, except I need to use R's, not X's. If you want to switch to just using X's, that's fine as well. So now I'm ready to factor by grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and make my two groups. Between 4R squared and 4R, I can divide out an R. So then I'm left with r minus 1. Now I notice that the beginning of the second one has a negative. So that means I need to take out a negative greatest common factor, and I'm going to be taking out a negative 7. So when I divide both of those by negative 7, I'm left with r minus 1. So here I have r minus 1, and then I'm going to take what's on the outside, and that's going to be my other factor, which is 4r minus 7. So that's your final answer for number 5. Now, let's take a look at number 6. So number 6, I can take out a greatest common factor of 2. So then I'm going to be left with 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. So again, this part right here is what I'm going to be focusing on for factoring. So when I set up my x, I'm going to multiply 3 times a negative 4, which is a negative 12, and then I'm going to be adding to 11. So I want to figure out what adds to negative, multiplies to negative 12, and adds to 11. So what's good, that's going to end up being, well, I have 12. I'm going to have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. So this one, positive and negative, is what's going to give me 11. Well, I need to the 12 to be positive and the 1 to be negative in order to add to a positive 11. So now, again, I'm going to focus on this version for my grouping. I have to use grouping still because I have that 3 on the outside. So I split up my 11x as 12x minus 1x. And now I'm ready to oops, factor by grouping. 3x squared and 12x, I can take out a 3 and an x. And when I divide each of those by 3x, I'm left with x plus 4. Between negative 1 and negative 4, I can take out a negative 1. And that's going to change the signs of both of those to give me x plus 4. So then I have x plus 4 as one of my factors. And then I'm going to take what's on the outside, 3x minus 1, to be my other factor. So that concludes your note video for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.